Today, we are going to determine the future value of a stream of uneven cash flows. So let's say we have a company, Echelon Company, expects to receive annual cash flows as follows. In year one, they receive $2,000. Year two, they receive $1,500. Year three, $0. Year four, $3,500. And in year five, $4,800. Assuming an interest rate of 8%, what is the value at the end of year 5? So the first thing you have to say to yourself is, what is the question asking and what kind of information do I have? So if you read the question, they're clearly asking for the value in year 5, at the end of year 5. So that, this is going to be a future value question. Whenever you're dealing with a future value or present value question, there are generally five variables. And they are present value, future value, payments, which is basically going to be the cash flows in between the present value and the future value, the interest rate, sometimes called the discount rate, and then the number of compounding periods. Now in this particular equation, if you lo look at the stream of cash flows at time zero, there's no money involved. So we know the present value at time zero is going to be zero dollars. Then we have a stream of payments, the 2,000, 1,500, 0, 4,800. 4, so those are your payments throughout the life of this investment. The interest rate is given to us, that's 8%. And then the number of compounding periods. We know that we're going to go out to the end of year five. So that's going to be the key number to help us determine the future value. I think the easiest way to answer a question like this is simply to break each cash flow into a separate future value calculation. Now had there been a stream of even cash flows, it would be very easy to do on your calculator. And even with uneven cash flows, you can do it on your calculator. But it's always better to work in Excel or a spreadsheet like that. And it's pretty simple just to simplify the question and make each cash flow a separate calculation. So the formula for future value is present value times 1 plus the interest rate to the nth power. So as an example, let's look at year 1. The cash flow for year one is $2,000. And remember, unless the question says otherwise, we are always going to assume that the cash flow occurs at the end of the year. So we have $2,000. That would be the present value for that one particular payment. Now, how many periods are we going to go out? What is N going to equal to? Well, we're trying to find out the value at the end of year five. And we're operating at the end of year one for this particular cash flow. So five minus one is four. So N will equal four. The interest rate or R is 8%. There is no payment involved between this cash flow of 2000 and the future value at the end of year five. Remember, we already said we're going to calculate each individual cash flow as a separate future value problem. So payment equals zero. So now all we need to do is solve for the future value. And the future value in this case is 2,000 times 1 plus 0 0.08 to the fourth power, or 2,720.98. So let's go to a spreadsheet and um, actually do the calculation. So the first thing I would do is kind of make a time diagram, and you can draw this out on a piece of paper, but in Excel you could just do it with in a vertical format. So this is going to be years, so we have time 0, time 1, time 2, time 3, time 4, time 5. And then we're going to have, we'll enter the cash flows for each particular year. So at time 0, there's no dollars. Two thousand. We have um, two thousand dollars year one, fifteen hundred dollars year two, zero dollars year three, thirty-five hundred year four, four 
4,800 in year five. Um, the interest rate, and we'll call the interest rate R, is going to be 0 0.08. So I'm converting 8% into a decimal. And then we're going to have the factor, which is basically going to be the 1 plus R to the nth power. And the formula for that is going to be 1 plus 0.08. Oops, we made a mistake there. So it's going to be plus 1 plus 0.08. And then I am going to put it to a power which equals year 5 minus the current year, which is 0 in this case. And then we just multiply and we'll get the future value. So in this case, you have 0 times 1.46 and obviously that equals zero. So let's clean up the spreadsheet a little for it makes a little more sense. Move everything over to the right. Make this column a little bigger. Um, go out two decimals here. And then we'll go out two decimals here. We're going to copy this down. And you notice in this cell right here, we're getting 2,720.98, which equals the number that we calculated on, on the PowerPoint. Now you add up the column, and your future value for this equation is 13,190.55. Now another way to calculate future value is simply to use the built-in formulas inside Excel. So let's do that now. So we'll create another column, title it future value. And now we're going to use the Excel formula. So we're going to type in equals FV, which stands for future value, and Excel will walk you through it. So first it's asking for the rate, which is 0.08. It's asking for the number of periods. So we're going to use the same formula, which will be 5 minus the current year. In this case, it's 0. There are no payments. Remember, we're calculating each cash flow as an individual equation. And the present value is zero for this particular payment. And so the future value is zero. Okay, let's copy this formula down for each year. Oh, actually, I just realized. Remember, let's go back into the cell. And we have to enter the cash flow as a negative because we're investing this cash flow and then we're going to get it back at the end of year five. So let's copy and go down. And you can see the numbers match up perfectly. And we get the same number. So your answer is 13,190.55.